Hey guys, got another weapon light to share with you. Uh, this one's primarily made for pistols, but you really could put it on anything. Uh, this company, I believe it's Votatu, uh, reached out to me on Instagram and asked if I would be willing to take a look at this. And I always enjoyed doing these kind of videos, so I said sure. Um, box is pretty plain, not much going on here. Um, so I figured we'd do an unboxing, go over like all the specs and features. Um, and we'll see what this light's all about. So, the slides off here. Oh, there's something else in there. So we got a manual. Um, looks like here is a bunch of different rail keys. Uh, so we'll go over what all is offered for this in a bit. Uh, there is a tool, it looks like an Allen key. A charging cable so it looks like it's magnetic and then a USB a on the one side and then we got the light in here itself it's everything out of there and here's the light coming out so some quick specs on the HL 10 it is 800 lumens and has a hundred thirty meter uh, beam distance or throw made out of aluminum it's supposed to have some type of mill spec hard coat anodization which uh, reduces the chance of it getting scratched the overall length is 2.1 inches the overall height is 1.36 inches and the width is 1.1 inches and the weight is 2.2 ounces. Has an IPX4 waterproof rating. And that battery is built in and non-replaceable. So there's the magnetic charging port. I showed that charger earlier. So we'll go over this in a bit. And here's a quick look at the manual. It does look like the 800 lumens only goes for about a minute and then it steps down it says 43 percent so i don't know let's just say 450 lumens and then it'll run for another hour and 10 minutes and then these are those keys that they give you so they give you a, a glock one a smith and wesson beretta sig and then one for just a, a 1913 picatinny and see what's back here. Uh, this just shows you how to change out uh, the different keys and then how to charge and then the operation, which we'll go over that here in a minute. So first impressions is that the light is tiny. Uh, this is probably even smaller than like the stream light, like the TLR eights and sevens. Like this is a tiny little light. Um, it does seem like it's really well made though. Like the construction feels really good. Um, one thing I will say is that these like paddles are plastic. I wish those were more of a rubber. There is a nice texture on them and I really like paddle style controls. Um, but like you can just feel that it's, it's plastic there. So before we go over the operation, I will get this thing charged up. I'm just going to take a battery bank hooked up here. And you can see the red light. Basically, this might take an hour or two. Whenever that turns green, we'll come back. All right, that was on there for an hour or two, and we are fully charged now. So operation of the light is pretty simple, which is what you want in a weapon light. You've got constant on, momentary on, and then a strobe feature. The controls are ambidextrous, so once you have it mounted, you can use either side. Um, if you want that constant on, it's just a tap and release. And then as you can see, that stays on. And if you want momentary on, you just press hold and release when you want it to shut off. Again, from either side, press hold, off. And here's a strobe warning. If you want strobe, it's you press both at the same time. And it looks like it is a constant rate strobe. And then back off. So yeah, that's it. Pretty simple and straightforward. So I think I'm going to put it on the G2C. As you see, I'm working with the empty gun here. 
because there aren't too many things that actually will fit this. And this has the Glock key in it right now. See that GL on the left side of it? And this is more of like a 1913 rail slot. So the Glock one, there's a little bit of front back play to that. So I'm actually gonna swap this out for uh, the 1913 one and see if that's a little bit better. And it'll be this screw right here. I basically will pull this out and then this whole key will come out. So there are the four other keys. And again, you can see a uh, SIG, uh, the Smith & Wesson, Beretta, and then the 1913. And just to show you for comparison, the 1913, if you look there, will be a little bit wider than what the, uh, the Glock one is. So yeah, this Votado fits on the G2C almost perfectly. You can see like the contour of the trigger guard. That almost looks like it was made for it. And there aren't many pistol lights will actually fit on this. Some of the O lights that have like the adjustable uh, type rail thing will, but yeah, this looks really good on here. And I personally love the, the paddle style controls. I mentioned that earlier, but like this is a memory spot right here for your index finger. And literally you come right off, right onto it. So nice. Like it literally couldn't be any easier than that. Really nice. I like that a lot. Uh, same thing for your thumb memory spots here. And you come right down, right onto the control. Very intuitive. I like this a lot. All right, next up is the range and uh, some nighttime shots. All right, guys, out of the range here with this uh, HL10. I'm gonna put at least 50 rounds through it. Uh, make sure there's no flickering, make sure it handles the recoil, you know, it doesn't shut off or anything weird like that. So I'll get back with you. Here is what the HL10 looks like inside. Again, the room is 12 by 20. All right, outside, I'm about 35 feet away from this exterior wall. We'll see what this looks like out here. Yeah, that actually lights it up pretty well. And about 50 feet away from this corner, we'll see what this looks like. So I gotta say, I'm actually pretty impressed with this little Votado, the HL10. I put 50 rounds through it at the range. There weren't any issues whatsoever. Uh, no shutting off, no flickering, did not get overly hot, nothing at all. And as you can see from the nighttime shots, it's got a pretty uh, nice combination beam. Um, I personally would like to see maybe a little bit brighter hot spot. It's pretty decent. Um, but to maybe make the beam just a little bit tighter, which will improve the, the candela a little bit more. I thought that the plastic feeling paddles might bother me, but once I got this mounted onto the gun, you honestly don't hardly even notice it. Um, I would still like to have more of a like rubberized grip texture on there, um, but these are actually not bad at all. 
I did want to see if the HL10 will fit on this little Ruger because almost nothing does. This is so short through here. Um, I've been working with the empty gun, but uh, I, I did have to switch back to the Glock rail key. Um, the 1913 was too big for this spot here, but let's just see if that will. Yeah, that looks like that goes on there as well. Let me get that tightened down. I have probably had somewhere between like 40 and 50 uh, weapon and pistol lights total, and I think I've only had two that would fit on this little Ruger. Uh, so this is the third one, and it fits nicely. It's very secure. Can't move it any direction at all. So it's obviously nice that you don't need to remove the light you know, in order to charge it, just put that charger right up on it. Um, I'm not a huge fan of these magnetic type chargers. Um, I've actually charged this twice and it works perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, but I always feel like, you know, you're probably going to lose a cable at some time or just like your phone cables and stuff. Uh, this will probably break, you know, right by the USB plug or something at some point. Uh, which does mean that you are going to have to contact a company if you need to get a replacement cable. You know, Olight uses a magnetic cable and people buy the heck out of their lights. But I would almost like to see like a, a USB-C port down here um, instead of the magnetic port. Another thing personally I'd like to see um, is maybe some type of lockout feature um, in case you are transporting this. Um, the way that these paddles they're basically completely flush or right in line with the body um, maybe if these were to come down just a little bit like in toward the trigger guard just a little bit more so i'm gonna tell you it doesn't take much pressure at all like any type of uh, hit on that it turns that light on so it uh, just any any movement against those paddles turns it on um, you can see right there it's on so yeah it doesn't doesn't take much some lights like this will have it where if you press both buttons for, um, you know, five seconds or something like that, it'll go into a lockout. Uh, this one does not have it. Having said that, I still think it's an absolutely fantastic buy coming in under $40. It'll fit a lot of subcompacts, um, definitely any compact it'll fit. Um, and yeah, this is one I'd actually recommend especially if you're on a budget. All right, guys, that is going to be it on this one. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.